At one point, the subject of today's video was a five-star recruit, was an All-American, and was a projected top 10 pick. At one time, it seemed like he was a generational player coming out of high school, but after playing at two different Blue Blood programs, he has since gone from a potential top 10 pick to an undrafted free agent. Today, we're going to be talking about Eli Ricks. That was probably the most requested video in my comments over the last few days, so today, we're going to take a look at his rise, go through how he became a young prodigy at the cornerback position, talk about his time at Bama and LSU, why he went undrafted, and what I think is next for him. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, let me know what topic I should do next, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Eli Ricks. So going back in time, Rick's mother prevented him from playing football. She put him in basketball and karate instead, and she said football had a history of really bad injuries. She even hid youth football pamphlets from him when they would come in the mail, but eventually his father would persuade her to let their son play. She said there was one condition for it though. If you're going to do this, you better do it right, and you better be good at it. I'm perfectly happy if you don't want to do this. It makes me nervous anyways. Rick's obviously decided to play. Growing up in California, his parents began to drive him the train, and he saw some of the best coaches in the area at only 10 years old. Rick's mother said, quote, We didn't have to wake him up. We didn't have to push him. We also didn't have to persuade him. That's what he wanted to do always. He started to go to camps early on, and when he was in his early teens, he met Coach Orgeron for the first time. At the time, he coached the defense and was the recruiting coordinator for USC, and he'd met Orgeron at one of his camps. And after Ed organized a sprint contest, Ricks won it for his age group. That was when Coach O first met Eli, and things would change a lot for the both of them over the next few years. Almost a decade later, Ricks attended a camp in 2018 in Louisiana, and that is when Orgeron decided to offer Ricks a scholarship. After the LSU offer, the Blue Bloods started trying to get Ricks on board. Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, and even other teams started to offer him, and this was all before his junior year. The guy was absolutely insane at modern day high school and would blow up as a junior. He ended up finishing with nine interceptions, three of which would go all the way for a touchdown in just one game. One of his teammates said, quote, he plays games with the quarterbacks. If you don't study him, you'll keep throwing it out there and you'll continue to intercept the ball and take it back. Rick started to fly into every coach in America's recruiting board and some thought he was the best corner in the class of 2020. He wanted to be the best corner in America and one quote in particular would actually stand out to me. His mother said, in high school, Ricks played through a torn labrum, drove five hours round trip daily for training, and even graduated early, all to be the best corner in the country. The sport represented more than a passion or a job for him. It consumed him. Early on, it looked like Ohio State would be the leader in his recruitment because his roommate and good friend actually was committed there, but once Urban Meyer left, OSU fell behind, and he never really considered them. But he would make a huge change going into his senior year. He chose to leave Matter Day, the powerhouse program in California, to graduate early in December. That decision would be very difficult on its own, but then he decided to transfer to IMG Academy. He moved across the country all by himself to finish the rest of his high school career and could have risked getting exposed by better competition. While playing at IMG though, it was like college with their schedule and competition, and he'd get to line up against great players, including Jermaine Burton. He also had a really tough year, as he played his entire senior year with an injury. Before his last game, the injury became obvious as he stayed on the ground after a hard collision, and doctors diagnosed him with a torn labrum. They said there was absolutely no reason for him to play in his final game, because he could risk changing his career with a bad injury. He decided to play anyways, and would go down as a fighter and someone who gave it his all. But where was Rex going to go? He visited multiple schools, but never wavered from his early commitment from LSU. In 2019, when LSU beat Bama with Joe Burrow, that gave Ricks the final nail in the coffin to say that he was going to Baton Rouge. Ricks dominated at both Mater Day and IMG, which are the two best high schools in the country arguably, so he was going to do great at LSU. He was not afraid of competition either, as he famously said, there could be 500 cornerbacks committed. If that's the school for me, I don't fear competition. I always think I'm going to be the top dog wherever I go. I'm always going to come in thinking I can beat these guys out, and those are my guys, and that's not going to affect me. LSU fans were raving about the signing of Ricks, and he was going to step in right away and make an impact for the Tigers. What did the scouts have to say? Well, one said, quote, at 6'2", 196 pounds, Ricks is already an NFL-sized corner. He's got long enough arm to successfully jam receivers at the line, and also has excellent closing speed and short area quickness. The two highlight videos don't show much of Ricks and run support, but 247 gave him very high marks as a run defending corner. 247 Sports also gave him a great grade. He was listed as a five star recruit, the number two cornerback behind Keely Ringo, and the 14th best player in the class of 2020. 
So how would he end up doing at LSU? As a freshman at LSU, Ricks would start to blow up. He ended up playing in eight games and finished with 20 tackles, four interceptions, and two pick sixes. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though, as he wouldn't arrive as a complete product, and if he really wanted to be a star, he would need to get in the weight room more, and both his anticipation and mental preparation would need to get better. He did have a good freshman year though, and at times got a little too excited. He even got caught taunting against South Carolina, and Coach Orgeron said, quote, I'm going to give him a mulligan on that one, but he ain't getting another one. He only lost two total games in high school, so those losses in 2020 were probably not easy on Eli, and his mom said, I hope he's eating, and I already know he's not sleeping. Ricks ended up being so good, though, that he was not only a freshman All-American, but also a third-team All-American nationally. In 2021, Ricks had a ridiculous amount of hype, but this would be where things started to go downhill. He ended up only playing in six total games, finishing with 11 tackles. He did end up having one interception and one pass deflection, but six games into the year, he opted to have surgery for a nagging shoulder injury. At the time, there were some questions about it all, as there were a lot of good LSU players who opted out once they started losing. Either way, I'll give Ricks the benefit of the doubt. He also decided to enter the transfer portal, and while plenty of schools were going to pursue him, he really had one school in mind. He was going to bring his 31 tackles and 5 interceptions within the Tuscaloosa, and he said, quote, I never visited Bama at a high school, but my senior year when I was at IMG, I talked to Coach Saban almost every day. Bama would have a depleted secondary, so he'd get a chance to come in and play right away, but that is not how it would end up going. Rex would only play in a total of 6 games in 2022, finishing with 13 tackles and 4 pass deflections. His best game came in their bowl game against Kansas State. What a disappointing season it was for Rex. He went from a freshman All-American to barely playing his next two years. Despite that, he was still considered a top 10 pick. Before the season started, Todd McShay listed him as his 10th best prospect, and Alabama was surely going to get the most out of him. As I said though, that is not what would end up happening, and he declared for the 2023 NFL Draft. He's expected to be a first round pick a couple weeks ago, but slowly he started to fall down draft boards, and as the draft night went on, he ended up not getting selected through 7 rounds. This was extremely disappointing, and he ended up getting picked by the Philadelphia Eagles. Not only is that ironic because they're grabbing all the best undrafted defenders, but he's also going to be alongside Keely Ringo, who was the one corner who was ranked ahead of him. Because of both Ringo and Ricks being their two undrafted corners, I think there's only room for one of them on the roster, but both of them have the talent to make it in the NFL in my opinion. Why did Ricks end up falling? Well, I couldn't find a whole lot on it, I ended up reading through some comment sections, and according to Alabama fans, it seems that Ricks had a really hard time picking up Pete Golding's defensive system, and that is why he struggled. One even said, that's why they're both gone now. He also had those injury struggles throughout his career, and some said he had an immature reputation. I really have no idea what was going on, and it was probably a mix of multiple factors, but either way, I was still pretty shocked that Ricks ended up going undrafted. Surely he has more potential than a linebacker from Wagner, or some random receiver with 300 yards, but I'm not an NFL GM, and I don't get paid to do this. Either way, I think he's going to be a steal for the Eagles, and hopefully Ricks turns things around and lives up to all the potential he had coming out of high school. But what do you guys think? If you're an LSU or Bama fan, what do you think happened to Eli Ricks? If you're an Eagles fan, do you think he'll make the roster? And what player from the 2023 NFL Draft should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.